It's your boy Stubbs here for another dissertation on one of my horrible creations. And today that's going to be the Pipe Hitter 37mm Launcher. I'm not the first person to make a 3D printable 37mm Launcher, and I definitely won't be the last. But this seems to be the most simplified version available, and they all run around the same principle of using a hardware store fence post pipe as a barrel. It's actually more like 38, 37 and a half millimeter internally. They're not going to be consistent, but they're close enough. Then you'll need your projectile. I have 3D printed this one. This one is also empty. No smoke powder, no lift charge. It uses a commercially available 37 millimeter case and a 209 shotgun primer. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out how that works. Mine has a reinforced breech face using this fender washer. So we're not talking plastic on primer contact. And you do have to grind the inside of the chamber to accept the shell. When we get to the working components of this, however, I'm not going to take it apart. Everything is self-explanatory or visible. You have a charging handle that charges your striker, as I'm going to call it. It runs on two springs parallel to the bore, and the trigger sear is a single piece that lets it forward, firing the launcher. It has this latch on the bottom that fits a spring-loaded catch on the bottom of the barrel, <laughs> and that's how you load, unload, fire the launcher pivots on this joint on the front that makes the barrel detachable, removable, interchangeable, and latches, unlatches the same way. This model is equipped to fit onto a standard rifle, carbine, or mid-length AR-15 handguard with simple bolts. No proprietary mounting there. I also am working on a standalone variant. Now we're going to talk about outfitting and equipping this. For use, I have here a Tactical Taylor 40 millimeter bandolier. Don't know how much that cost the government, but it cost me uh, about five bucks or something. When it comes to launcher accessories, uh, nobody has a launcher to justify the existence of the accessories normally. So here I am giving you the chance to own all the Tactical Taylor gear you want. This one right here is set up with a Knights Ornament Company M203 rail site. This does need a front sight as well, and I have the cheapest UTG sight available. And you can accessorize a little bit with an Among Us, maybe a Minecraft sheep, who knows. And I'm back. You would want to see this mounted onto a rifle for the best demonstration, and there will be a live fire demonstration after this. I have a lapsable stock on my retro mid-link XM4 build, and that is so I can hold the magazine as the grip as so, as I would recommend for this style of launcher. I've got a laser sight on here that does not work for the launcher. I don't have any sights for the launcher on this. This is just the wing it minute of uh, good enough, and that's effective for the type of munition we're gonna be looking at here, which is mostly gonna be smoke. All right. If you thought that one had all the bells and whistles, here's the whole kitchen sink. My personal double-barreled AR-15 with another pipe hitter, 37mm launcher. This one comes equipped with a PSQ-18 M203 SOP mod laser sight. Comes with your laser sight, your illuminator, backup tritium. It has an LCD display that gives me the readout for what range is selected. Not a range finder, but as well as including a tilt sensor. This can tell me if I'm holding the weapon system level or not. It's invaluable for something as ridiculous as this. It functions with the same operation as the other, although this one is equipped with a suppressor that makes it rather cumbersome. Now, what are the legalities of putting a suppressor on a 37mm launcher? Well, it's not a firearm suppressor because this isn't a firearm. Go figure. Now, before we get to the live fire demonstration, I have this list of safety considerations we're going to take 
before the demonstration. Today's target will be a dual bullet box rated for projectiles such as 22LR and 22LR. All right, let's check out the aftermath. Here's our recovered projectile. This did not have any filler material, did not ignite. Usually this would fit. Yay volume of smoke powder, although it doesn't get particularly heavy. Then we have our smoking gun. We have our spent casing, still some smoke coming out. There is no propellant charge, only a 209 primer. The 209 primer is uh, partially ejected. It did try to go down into the breech face, but it swung out just fine. This case can be reused. You can 3D print cases. They will crack after five or six uses, but these cases I've got on eBay have lasted me tens, twenties of rounds. Now let's take a close look at our target. There is no particular uh, harm done to the cardboard as this probably weighs about as much as a lemon. This is not meant to be an impact munition, nor is it meant to be a weapon. So overall, I wouldn't say that it would be particularly safe to get hit with one of these, but it wouldn't be exceedingly hazardous. That will conclude today's lesson or dissertation, if indeed you have learned anything at all. Now you're set to go assemble your own 37mm launcher, whether it be mine or somebody else's.